Okay, we're back with our Coleman CGU furnace. I'm going to go over how we would check the heat exchanger in this furnace to see if there's any cracks. Okay, here you got the gas valve and the burner all pulled out. Uh, of course, we've shut off the power and we've shut off the gas so that we could remove the uh, gas valve. And then we're going to look inside here to see what we can see inside the heat exchanger. This is a drum style heat exchanger. So uh, it's just a big tank inside there. There is a secondary heat exchanger because it's a high efficiency furnace. Uh, but the drum is, uh, this one still used the drum heat exchanger. Okay, you can see it's a pretty dark hole in there. And uh, we can use a flashlight and a mirror for this part of the heat exchanger. Or we can use a camera. Uh, cameras are nice, the pictures aren't all that great, but uh, they have their own light source and so on. So let's see what we can uh, come up with for the inside of this heat exchanger. Okay, here we're using a camera. And you can see the camera is kind of hard to use, and the, and the pictures aren't all that great. But uh, you're looking for the, on the seams and the like to see if you can find anything wrong, any uh, uh, stress cracks or anything like that. Uh, also, on this furnace, there's a baffle on top. We'll see that in a minute. Okay, you can see there's where that baffle is up there and it's mounted to the uh, side. Sometimes that uh, baffle actually comes loose and uh, it'll hang down. There's really not much you can do about it, but, uh, but throw away the heat exchanger or the furnace, whichever makes sense. So uh, you're going to inspect all that as best you can. Okay. Here's a look at this heat exchanger. There's your drum. You've got the burner tube down below and the exit into the secondary heat exchanger, which is these two uh, clamshells. Uh, there's not a lot of ways to check these except, see now I don't have any ductwork in this thing. This thing's just a mule, so uh, there's no duct work on it, it's just a... So this thing doesn't have any duct work, so I can see the the heat exchanger on it. This is just a testing unit, a mule I use to uh, test how these furnaces work. So, uh, a little hard to tell. If you can get a, a camera down there with the duct work on, you might be able to see something. But you can see the problems you could have with this uh, with this furnace trying to be sure that heat exchanger is good. So you can see you can inspect the heat exchanger in these things but you can inspect all of it. So you're limited in what you can do. Now there's a number of ways of checking heat exchangers if you have to go that far but Let's look at a few of the things that might happen if you had a problem. Number one, you should be carrying a monoxer um, CO detector in your truck and you would test the air coming straight off the heat exchanger. Test it in several spots in the ductwork. Put a hole in ductwork, check several spots there uh, with a fan on and with the fan off and uh, see if you detect any CO. If you detect CO and there's no other uh, CO source in the house, then you're going to have to see if you can find out what's going on because you have a problem. If you detect CO, you have a problem. That's all there is to it. So, let's say you have a suspicion that it's bad. Now, what are the things that should shut it off? Because these things actually do shut themselves off if they have a bad enough problem. That's not perfect. They will still fail. However, pressure switch not making. That's one of them. 
uh, I would be checking my pressure switch. If you know what pressure it should be reading, uh, which sometimes you don't know on these. Uh, they don't like to give the that information out in a lot of the literature. Uh, but if you're having a pressure switch problem, your vents are clear and everything like that, that's an issue. Down here, okay, right here you have a manual reset limit. That's a rollout switch. That rollout switch keeps kicking off. If the limit switches kick off, now this one, an odd place of limits for this thing. The limits are right back here. Fan switch and limit switch is right back there. If the limit switch kicks on right after the fan comes on, or even before the fan comes on, that's a big indication of uh, a cracked heat exchange. Other than that, you're looking for how the flame, does the flame change? You'll be watching the flame. Uh, you'll be going down here with the burner in, and you'll be watching that flame when the fan comes on to be sure it's not wavering about changing at all when the fan comes on. Okay, uh, that's about it on checking the heat exchangers and these things. They are pretty tough to check, and uh, you're not always going to get uh, satisfaction. The number one thing that you want to do is do a, do a CO test. I would do a CO test in any service I did in any furnace, especially if I'm going to replace parts. If I'm going to replace some fairly expensive parts, I want to do a CO test on it to be sure uh, I don't obviously have a problem. Okay, that's the heat exchanger on the Coleman CGU.